Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Amigos, the podcast about everything Amiga. Amigos is a proud member of the Throwback Network, your home for quality retro podcasts. And now, here are your hosts, Aaron Dowdy and John Bodokar Schaller. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we are going to talk about three games. Uh, this is all three Odyssey 2 ports for the Amiga Terrahawks, Killer Bees, and KC Munchkin. Yes, it's an it's an O2 extravaganza. That's right. Um, or a video pack, if you will. The video pack. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. Um, before we get into the action, though, Aaron, uh, I want to give everybody a quick and final Amigathon rewards update. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is becoming like the uh, this it's is like the, the key the or, Yeah, yeah, all of that stuff. I've we become swear what, I've become what I've hated. Um, the Amigathon rewards are in the mail. Do not fret; they will arrive to your doorstep. Uh, I've seen them before. It's, you know it's it. True. Aaron has signed all the postcards. The magnets are all packed away safely. I licked all those. Yes, and so uh, they will be coming to you soon. Also, Aaron, uh, we got some mail this week. Oh boy. It's over there on the couch. That's a good place for it. I'll dance and sing while you're gone. We love mail. Just throw that mic down anywhere, Boat. Hey, uh, the uh, postcards are also pretty cool. I was very impressed with them. Boat, boat spared no expense into uh, getting the postcards made up. So, uh, what's in the box? All right, inside this box, which came from Tapes from the Crypt. Man, Tapes, is a, is a, he's a giver. I have not opened this up yet. I've just it made open. it easy to open. It looked I, I just removed all the money. Does anyone ever actually not look? It's like, oh, I swear I didn't look. No, I swear. I mean, this is what I saw. <laughs> I saw that. So take from that what you will. A new car! All right, we have a uh, very well-packaged something. It's an LP. It, it's, I'm hoping a, for Bob and Doug McKenzie. Let's see. It's a beauty. Maybe this is a uh, very thin. Maybe this is like Avengers Seven or that thing that oh, you wanted. Oh man, I don't think so. Oh, the, is this the? Oh yes. Boom. <laughs> a new issue of Amiga Future. This Thank is you. issue number one thirty three. They've been at this thing for a wow. while. Let's see that. Is that? Is, let's see what the date on this thing is. Holy, this is a current issue. Yeah. Though. Holy smokes! Look at that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank because, you. Guess what, old A looks through these things every single week. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> and my girlfriend, I even caught her glancing through uh, one. I was, I was pleased. It was very Winning pleased. her over. You know, you gotta say, I know we've mentioned this before about Amiga Future. Man, what a what a, a quality item th this is. I mean, it's, it's full color, beautiful. Where was this stuff back in the day? Yeah, I it mean, looks just glossy. as good as Retro Gamer, and I mean that. That's Absolutely. nice. Man, thank you very much, Tapes. Tape's always always a good man with a goodie. All it's, right. It's mighty nice. Oh, there's more in there's there? There's more in here. Oh, okay. What, what we got there? Looks like we got here. Appears to be a cartridge boat. Let's see what we got here. All right. Man. Okay. I don't recognize the... Oh, man, he's a, good, he's a good rapper. What do we got here? Oh, yeah, I believe I read him and he mentioned this. This is a cocoa cartridge. <laughs> this is for the cocoa. It's called Don Pan. Oh man! Thank you, thank you very much. Because these, you think these wouldn't show up in America, and or would show up, but they don't. They never show up. That's awesome. Well, here's Love one that's it. even better. Here's one that's still in the box. Oh, Have boy. you ever seen a cocoa cartridge still in the box? I, I've seen them in the store. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. You were actually alive that. when they were in production. Well, you don't have to say it like that. It makes you sound like an old man. Oh, Tapes, that's awesome. We really appreciate that. So thank you very much, Tapes. We appreciate uh, all of your all of your fine Brent will be jealous. Is uh, there any way to, is there a way for you to hook up your Coco to the uh, video capture card? Uh, hmm, yeah, I think so. You ought I think to. I might be able to do it. You know, uh, uh, if you follow uh, my and Brent's uh, little show, ARG, founded by Boat, I might add, uh, in the good shirt, um, we uh, we covered the Coco, was it two weeks ago? I can't remember. And uh, uh, 
uh, it's a cool little system. And it was the Dragon 32 over over in the UK and in Europe. It's a fun system. I have to say, I've not played these games, and having one still in the package. Ooh, how swank. That's awesome. Race the Clock. Maze game. I love it. So thank you, Tapes. Above and beyond. Um, we don't have any news to speak of this week, Aaron. But uh, we do have several new shirts available. Okay, what do you got? Show so, away. Over at our official Amigos uh, store at TeePublic, which is tpublic.com slash store slash Amiga Tees. Wow. Uh, I can't remember that on my best day. Hey, not all your Whenever URLs we push the store on the other show, I just go like, yeah, um, <laughs> it's a, there's a link. Go, go find it. So uh, you can go here, and uh, we have two new designs this week. We've got the uh, Amigos World of Supporters tee. Okay. Which, which is very clever. But yeah. Uh, I, you did a good I, I job I put this on one that. together the other day. This is our new Patreon shirt. So going forward, all new Patreon supporters will be added to this shirt. As you can see, it's got the sensible soccer theme. And uh, it's uh, people people seem to like it. So. Is there going to be a Madden-themed release shirt? Uh, <laughs> that's a joke because no one cares about Madden. That's Dead yeah. going. <laughs> and then we also have one more new shirt. Uh, we have... The World of Tanks shirt. Now, Aaron, do you know anything about the PC game World of Tanks? Uh, I've heard of it. Is that that's not the thing that the Schwarzenegger shills? Is it? No, that's uh, no, that's a different thing. Oh, okay. No, then I, I mean I've heard of this. I know it's a thing, but mm. I, I've never played. I like tanks. Well, this if it, in the Amiga universe, there's only one tank. Yes. <laughs> and so uh, we've got some tank mice battling it out on the on the on the battlefield it's sort of here. An Amiga and then apocalyptic. And Amiga then what world. do you see? What do you see back here on the hill? Uh, uh, it looks like uh, a, a beautiful scene from say Shaq Fu or something. I can't. What's back there? I still can't see it. It's a walker, Aaron. It's a what? It's a walker. Oh, cool! <laughs> I'm blind. I need a walker. I need give me, give me one. I mean, let me make it a little bit bigger for you. Oh, I see him. Yeah, man. Now that you point him out, sure. Okay. There we go. Cool, man. The tanks are in deep trouble. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great, it's a great game that you hated. Anyway, <laughs> head on over to uh, tpublic.com/stores/amigatees and clothe yourself in Amiga awesomeness. Every purchase helps support Amigos. Get leave it to you to put the wall the. That crazy case. <laughs> it does look like something you it would does. see in a post-apocalyptic tank world. Right, I agree. Right, walking it's sort around. of like a sand speed or something. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, so anyway, that is, uh, that's all of the news for this week. We do have some, um, some videos that we put up this week, though. We do. Um, let's see. Uh, we have, if you are following our recounting of the Amigathon 2018, uh, we have put up a, a couple new shows. And we're continuing to put them up. Uh, they should be coming up every, I'd say, three or four days, uh, give or take. Uh, I'm going to be on vacation uh, for a little while, but uh, I think we've got plenty to keep us going. Uh, so I've enjoyed messing with those and looking. I've enjoyed it for the most part. Some parts are painful and humiliating, but <laughs> for, for the most part, I've enjoyed it. For nothing else, guys, you need to check out these videos just to see Aaron's awesome intros that he does. God, please. I mean, everybody on the Discord is just going oh, nuts God. because of the, the, the skill and panache that he puts oh, into these yeah. introductions. I really, I'm, when I'm synonymous with panache, that's for sure. <laughs> trash. But trash. But I've had, I've had fun looking back, you know, and as we get on. I really wish, it's a shame that we don't have those last four hours because those are the ones I want to see the most because I, for, I don't remember anything about them. Right. I completely forgot well, I yeah. have emailed YouTube customer support. Apparently, oh, I did read that there is a chance you. that they may have they may be able to restore that lost time. Oh, so man, that would be that would be a Christmas be, miracle. That'd be awesome. Um, we now you released several uh, plays of today's game, right? Um, so if you want to see uh, uh, gameplay footage of all three of these games with sound and no commentary, uh, check out our channel um, and. Uh, on Amigos Retro Gaming, you can see me play uh, some games. I, the, the first two I played pretty well when I got the KC Munchkin. I think I spent all of my best playthroughs trying to beat the high score. I didn't do as well, but uh, but definitely check those out. It's um, They were a lot of fun to play, and these are brand new Amiga titles that you can play today. For free, for right free. now. Yeah, uh, and links to the ADFs are in all the descriptions. Very good, very good, but... Uh, did you and you also put up a stream this week, didn't you? Put up uh, a stream. I played some uh, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, and Neo Geo. So three of my favorite systems. Very good. Um, <clears throat> myself and and the Brent, 
uh, have put out a, uh, uh, a new ARG. We've got a couple in the kitty here. Uh, you will see us play uh, the Xbox, all right? The X, everybody loves the Xbox. No controversy. <laughs> and we also uh, have another very interesting show coming up, which I won't reveal, but it should be a lot of fun. So uh, if you're in the ARG, uh, uh, please check us out. Uh, what games did you play on the on the Xbox? <clears throat> I played uh, Test Drive Eve of Destruction, which is a, a tremendous game. Gosh, what did Brent play? <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to remember what it was. Oh, he played Futurama. Futurama, the game based on the cartoon, uh, which I love the cartoon. Uh, it's an interesting... Me and Brent have different tastes. Let's just put it that way in some things. We both like Futurama, but... Uh, well, Tune in to find out. All right. Sounds good. Well, Aaron, do you want to dive right in and start talking about this week's... Uh, we're going to we're gonna give you just a little bit of... Hold oh, up one okay. second. One thing I, I would like to hear you discuss. Okay. We didn't, we didn't talk with this beforehand. Obviously. But I would like you to tell the people about your uh, craftsmanship and skill with reassembling your PC. Oh, they, they want to know because the PC died the, soon after the Amiga thon. So they need closure. Tell them what I, Tell them what you've done. Well, um, after Amiga thon, I tried to install a USB three hub that was powered internally in, <laughs> in, in the case. I didn't mean for you to just start talking about the part where you where it blew up. You didn't even skip that part. Well, that's that's what happened. It wasn't Amiga thon that did the PC in. It was my own incompetence. <laughs> no, no. And so, um, defective product. Folks, s- surely. S- well, that might have had something to do with that's it. Right. It, it did cost me all of nine ninety nine from Amazon.com. Yeah, only the best. Yeah. Only the best. Um, so I bought a new motherboard. I had to wait for a, a long. I had to wait two weeks, but in the days of Amazon Prime, it seems like forever when you're used to getting stuff in two days. I put everything back together, and lo and behold, starting next week, we will be recording with the good old PC. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to stream and record at the same time with Abandon. I won't have to constantly be checking my frame rate to make sure that we're not buffering or anything like that. So uh, I've missed missed having a powerful (laughs) PC. It's a faithful friend. This computer will not die. No. It's like Matt Hardy, so... It's good. I'm glad to see you got it up and running. I was, I was, there was some tentative, there was some tumultuous time. <laughs> yeah, probably my, my best moment. Because I, you and Brent are pros at that. I mean, you literally did this sort of thing for a living, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I'm a band director. That's not my, my <laughs> first skill. Um, and so if we'd I, broken a cello, you'd yeah, be there. That's right. That's right. And so um, when I put, the, when I put the, the new CPU in, you know, I, I did the thing. It was my first time with the little lever and all that stuff. I thought that was kind of neat. Um, and uh, and then I fired up the computer. I was like, hey, it's working. And then all of a sudden, pew, it shut down on me. And yeah. I tried again, pew, and I didn't realize that uh, you have to put a cooling system on the CPU or yes. else it will it will get so hot that the motherboard will tell it to shut down. Yeah, yeah. Now, if, for, now you know. Now I know. You know. And so once once I figured that out, I applied the thermal paste. Very good. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> well, you said it right there. Hey. That's that's what I do. That's how I netted. That's how I netted my wife. Sound like Don Cornelius yeah. for a second there. <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. Uh, uh, the PC is back. We're all back. Everything's all good. <laughs> Everything's good. We've even boats almost healed, aren't you, boat? I'm almost. He healed. was juggling bowling balls when I came down. I here. get I get my staples out tomorrow. Man. That's going to be... A, a, I need to get some stuff stapled. So. Hey, it's just like the hardcore matches, you know, except in reverse. Yeah? Well, it's not like that at all. <laughs> I've never been to a hardcore match where that happened. So. You've had the, the dollar bill s- stapled to the forehead? Yeah, but you didn't. Ha- your staples aren't coming out of your forehead. That's true. Bro. That's true. I don't want to know where they're coming out. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the Odyssey 2 that these games reported from. Uh, it will give you a little understanding, a little basis. Now, if you've... If you watched our ARG program, we covered the Odyssey 2 a couple weeks ago and, and uh, had a lot of fun. And uh, so I'm not going to go all over all that information again, but I thought I'd just kind of touch on it. So the, uh, the Odyssey 2 was known as the video pack in uh, Europe. So the video pack uh, was, was also called, there was also the G, uh, G7400 uh, video pack. And the video pack actually got a, a, uh, an extra release over there with, with updated uh, graphical abilities that we didn't get, sort of like an Odyssey 2.5. Or, yeah, they, they call it the Plus, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, so, but in America, we just had it, it was the Odyssey, you know, but it's the same basic thing. So, over here it was released in 78, 
uh, and or excuse me, in seventy nine in Europe, it actually came out earlier. It came out in December seventy eight. Now, which really is unusual. The Odyssey is the um, you know its main its main claim to fame is that it's the follow up to the Odyssey one, which was it was one of the well. It was the first home console. Right. The very first home and console. And it was also the brainchild uh, that, you know, you know, the fellow that developed Pawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ralph Bear. Ralph Bear. And he actually played a, a part in the Odyssey 2, not from an engineering perspective, but from a putting it over perspective. Green when light they were getting perspective, ready to, yeah. They were getting ready to kill it. And he's mm-hmm. like, no, this will make money. Mm-hmm. You know, he was right, too. Uh, so... Uh, this thing uh, sold over here in the states for 179 bucks, which in today's money, 671 bucks, which seems like a ton. But as we've done a lot of these old shows, I look and these consoles sold for tons. So I mean, you know, it, yeah, you know, it's They're, crazy. Everything was expensive. Uh, worldwide, two million sold. Not a huge seller if you think if you take into account one of the worldwide. least selling consoles we've covered. Well, we haven't covered any consoles. So to be fair, I'm talking about on ARG. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It was all oh, well. You know, you've, we, there's still some that were far w- lower, but yeah, nah, I mean, it's not, it wasn't the best. I like nah. uh, the Pippin. The, <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it's lower. Um, so the Odyssey 2, the, the standout part of the Odyssey 2 was it had a membrane keyboard, right? Uh, and it, uh, which is the reason my dad bought us one, because dad figured it'd put a lot of educational That's stuff right. on there. You it was a in, cunning move on the part of the Odyssey. You could turn it into a computer, yeah. stuff like that. Well, you couldn't, really. Uh, however, not in America, but over in the UK, they actually released so I can add one that you let you ha- sort of play with doll or basic on mm-hmm. it, which is we didn't get that, so that's kind of kind of cool. The Odyssey had a uh, a voice modulator that plugged into the top of it called the Voice, which that comes into play in in, in a couple of today's games, and um, it just sat right on top of the Odyssey too, sort of like piggyback style, and you put the cartridge in it, and the sound would come out of the voice. Not the TV, so it basically had its own speaker in it with its own volume control, which is it's pretty wacky. All right, um, uh, the Odyssey didn't get very much third-party love. Uh, in fact, it got practically nothing. It only had maybe seven or eight cartridges that were made by Parker Brothers or Magic. It included uh, Demon Attack, uh, Atlantis, and Magic did those, and then uh, Parker Brothers did like Frogger. Uh, they did uh, Popeye, which we mm-hmm. looked at one time, and, and a few others. But it was not a darling of, th- of, of the third-party manufacturers. Of course, it was alive in the same world where the Atari 2600 uh, was around the VCS, and the VCS was getting all the love. Right. And to a certain extent, the Intellivision, which was getting some of the love. It's kind of like Amiga in the days of the Mac, you know. Really? I mean, do you think that? Well, n- not from a gaming perspective, but maybe from a uh, just general people knowing about it perspective. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, this this uh, it's much like the Master. So this game, this thing reminds me of the Master System to a certain degree because of the where it was accepted. It was accepted in, in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. And it w- it was pretty popular uh, over there. Uh, it also had, uh, and if you look at some of our previous videos, it had the Master Challenge series with the board game. Uh, element to it, and there were three of these released. We got them all, amazingly. Uh, we actually played uh, Quest for the Rings and one of the most epic boat shoots of all time. <laughs> and it was, it turned out great. It did. It, it turned lot, out we well. We got to do that again sometimes. Yeah. It, was a, it was a load of laughs uh, when we when we when we did it. Um, this thing didn't have much processing power. It only had 6K of memory, and it had a 1K ROM in it, and it, the display was 320 by 238. You know, so this is pretty low end mm-hmm. in terms of uh, in terms of what you can do. I would with say, that. would you say that it was between the VCS and the Intellivision as far as its its prowess goes, or would you would you put it more just on par with the VCS? You know, the VCS had so many games, and it, that it well, had a, more of a chance for people to get to used to it and to get people, to know it. People knew how to program for it. And that's yes, the thing. Yeah. and so it's it it really is sort of tough to say. Uh, where exactly it lands? I mean, it's probably superior to the VCS technically, mm-hmm. but I'm not. Sure, I'm not going to sit here and say that the games all beat all the VCS right. games because they don't. Right. I mean, if you compare them to, to together, you're going to find more quality games on the Atari. But the Atari had a thousand times more yeah. games re- released for it. That's that's one thing worth noting too is that the Odyssey. If you are somebody that's looking to get into collecting for a system that you, and you want to get all the titles, the Odyssey is one of the most reasonable. <laughs> Uh, um, 
catalogs out there where most of the games are available for pretty cheap and you can get boxed copies. That's right. That's right. So, um, that's a little background on the actual Odyssey or video pack. Uh, how do you want to? Would you have a game you want to go into first? Yeah, both? let's do Terrahawks first. Terrahawks. Now, the reason why I chose this order is this is the order that Gary wrote uh, wrote the ports in. So his Very first good. one was was Terrahawks. So you had you gave Terrahawks a shot. Yeah. Uh, we actually covered this uh, on the Odyssey Two channel uh, or RG uh, when we did uh, the Odyssey Two, and uh, although we covered it as Attack of the Time Lord, which is what it was called in the U.S. A Terra Hawks was what it was called in the UK because it was based on a wacky uh, TV show. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever seen the TV show? I don't think we actually, me and you actually talked about that. You know, it's funny. When, when I knew we were doing this yeah. next week, I was, I'm going to check out this show. Yeah. I will watch three or four of these on YouTube. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know, that uh, the the uh, the, anima the animated, uh, it was called Super uh, Macromation is what mm -hmm. it was called. It was uh, Jerry Anderson or Gary. I think it's Gary. Uh, the, he was the same fellow that produced uh, Thunderbirds, right. I believe, and mm -hmm. there was another series there that I can't remember. Uh, but uh, when we got those, I remember when I was a kid, and we'd get those. I couldn't believe uh, the detail in them for like models and stuff. Right. Well, this is this is the the apex of that whole movement because this is a show from the eighties. I mean, right. This, this was a current right. show when Terra came out, and um, the amount of machinations, you know, when they show like things in space, like a space station, the amount of things that are turning and spinning, and yeah. all that stuff is mechanical. You know, there's no CGI. Uh, the puppets are very well detailed, and I mean, like the eye movement and stuff. And what really cracks me up about these old British shows is that even though this is a uh, a kids show, uh, all of the characters are drinking all the time. They've oh. all they got wine. Whenever they get nervous, they pour themselves. Things. I got better make this one a double. You just you never find that in a kids TV show in America. No, and and the thing about um, uh, those shows, and I'll have to say I did have a look at Terry Hawks, but m uh, most of my familiarity is with is with the older shows. Um, the the fact that you've got uh, those marionettes that are so uh, they're so they convey emotion and the backgrounds are so I mean they're so incredible that it makes it work. The scaling stuff really works well. Yeah. I mean I was really I guess I'm the biggest fan. I would every time I turned on a watch a couple episodes I was just impressed. You really have an appreciation for the art that goes into making a series. And, and like I'll, that. I'm going to make a comparison here. If you've ever watched Ta Ki was in the Thomas the Tank Engine, mm -hmm. okay? That's another show. They really, you know, where you use miniatures and 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 they really put a lot of effort into making it look sharp. Yeah. Now it's a di it, it wasn't as sharp as Thunderbirds, for example, or Terrahawks, because it didn't have to be. It was more mm -hmm. pastoral, whatever. But I mean, still, the amount of detail and the amount of effort put into this stuff is quite quite amazing. Yeah, I hope one day that these kind of shows make a comeback. They're just they would be so expensive to produce these days if you do everything with computers. Now, did you ever see Team America World Police? I have. And oh, you actually watched that? I did I watch am it. Baffled that you saw that, but you know, it was a different time. I but was it a different was, person. But it was uh, that that show, that was pretty amusing. Uh, slant on the entire well yeah it was a takeoff of yeah, this yeah. whole thing but it was still it was pretty funny mm -hmm. you know you know and they they did the same sort of technique too, yeah which I thought yeah was, was funny. so uh in in uh um in the show the bad guy is called zelda and it's a girl and it's a girl and in this game zelda is the in, in the american version it's the time lord he's the face that popped out and talked mm -hmm. all right so what did you think about uh this game the sound and and the way it played on the Amiga, and I, and, and of course you've got the pick comparison going on. Uh, what what are your thoughts? Well, I, I didn't get a chance to play any of the Odyssey versions mm -hmm. of these games, so I've only played the Amiga versions. Um, I thought that this is a it's a it's a pretty fun shooter. Um, it takes advantage of the voice synthesis that is uh, you know on the Amiga. It says like, "Watch out, Amigans," or something like that. You know, um, instead of normally says on the Odyssey version. Um, I thought the game was very colorful. Um, the, the sprites, uh, you know, the enemy ships, you know, flash different colors. Um, I thought that it, you can put a lot of stuff on the screen at once and there's no slowdown. Of course, one thing that we'll talk about with each of these games is that one of the hallmarks of the Odyssey 2 is you get one life and that's yeah, it. And it's that's game right. over. But in a score-based game, I mean, it really doesn't matter where you have one life or 30, you're still trying to get the high score. So, um, you know, he... I, it's clear that with all three of these games, Gary was not trying to add 
uh, anything to anything to these games to to update them, to make them more graph, you know, update the graphical fidelity. He was trying to, well, with the exception of Casey Munchkin, which we'll get into in a second, but um, he was trying to faithfully replicate this Odyssey two game for the Amiga, and I thought he did a great job. Um, I did think it was interesting that he didn't take advantage of, I guess, with the plus version of this game. Uh, you get a colorful moon and earth background. You get the kind of earth rise picture. Um, and I was kind of surprised he didn't he didn't put that into the Amiga version. Well, I'll tell you why. Oh, okay. I uh, doing research for this, and I, I guess I suppose you could just ask Gary. I was reading some of his. He always posts his releases on the English Amiga board, and he was asked if if he was, why he didn't include the uh, enhanced background first. And he said that's not what he grew up with, and he thought it was kind of distracting. And if you look at it, uh, and and Boat's got a right now for you at home there's a big earth and a moon back there which actually it, it's pretty interesting but it is uh distracting it's, it's very big uh and it and it i can understand why you would not want to include it sure uh, because the 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 advanced odyssey uh you put basically the games didn't change at all except it would put these advanced backgrounds it's really the only difference it's almost like a, a digital overlay yeah if you want the, you know and uh uh um I, did they enhance the games? I didn't see enough of them to do it, but I don't, don't necessarily think it enhanced this one that much. I mean, it's, it looks okay. It looks more advanced, but I don't think it helped. Now, one thing that did help is that when we played this, uh, I do not own the voice for the Odyssey. And if you don't have the voice for it, you'll lose a lot of the fun uh, the fun aspects of the game because this every between every level... Uh, the t- Zelda or the Time Lord will come out and badmouth you, mm-hmm. which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, now his phrases are classic computer talk, you know, uh, but uh, it's still cool. And there's a little face there, and you see the little lips moving, and, it, and it's uh, you know this is their own lip sync or anything. I mean, this is just like it, it, it goes arm arm arm, and sound comes out of the voice. And Gary uh, transferred that right on over, and it's very cool. Uh, and I will also mention that this and all and the other two games that that Gary played were all done with Blitz Basic, which is you know not bad. So, uh, uh, but overall, I like this game. It's a simple game. It reminds me a little. It's got a, it's a little demon attacky uh, in a way. The ships as you go up in level, they the the shots change mm-hmm. uh, and they get a little quicker. Uh, but uh, uh, it's a simple game. Uh, it's it's uh, not one that I own. I'd like to have it, but uh, I thought Gary's version was pretty good. Yeah. Now, uh, if you like to uh, put your high score up next to mine, uh, we were going to do a high score challenge, but one of us uh, did not partake. I'm sorry. I, I, I had a rough week. So, uh, but I, I ended up with a high score of 295. I have no idea if that's good or bad, but that's that's what I got. I'll also mention that Gary put in a very nice title screen. Yeah. Which the other version does not have. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> that was a, that was a nice uh, concession to modern. Uh, I mean, really, if you if you look at these side by side, uh, they 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 are very similar. You know, I, I just for the first time, I'm looking at this this Terrahawks bo- uh, mm-hmm. box, and I thought that this was a beholder right here. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about yes. from D and D? Yeah. I thought that that was the eye and that was the mouth. Well, you, you don't pay any attention, do you? I just I just looked at it. I just figured <laughs> that was what it was. So. Nope, nope. That's nope. a. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Who on the box cover pertains to the show. I don't, I don't know. I don't know enough about the show, but I thought it was a very good uh, job. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's move on to uh, Killer Bees. Killer Bees. Now we we covered Killer Bees. God, I don't know how long ago it's been. It's the first one. I remember when we found this. We were like, "Holy smokes!" Once again, when the Amiga, and we were all over it. In fact, this is the first time we actually talked to Gary. Was he right. responded to our video of this? Uh, Killer Bees. Uh, to t- on it uh, briefly is a game where you uh, actually play a, uh, a set of bees that is sent out to kill invading robots. All right, and the robots, which is stories. I, I think that my version of the killer bees is you're a killer bee and you're killing like guys. They're just they're, you're, they're not they're, they're not, not robots. robots. You're just kill them, <laughs> kill them dead. So um, uh, basically, the aliens send out bees to to kill you okay and that and that is the, that is the story so in this game it's a real sort of a free form basically these robots walk around the screen you're a little pack of dots basically and you move over you try to just your dots over the robots that are walking around and they'll slow down as you're stinging them and eventually they'll die and there'll be a headstone that pops up mm-hmm. to defend them there are like i said other types of bees uh, there's white green and red bees that come out and they're very 
degrees of aggressiveness. And then on the side of the uh, screen, you've got what's called the Rocha Array. Now, I just read this looking, doing some research for this show. Uh, this game was made by Robert S. Harris. And Rocha is so his, basically his ray. Rocha is, is short for his name, Robert S. Harris. Oh, Rocha. interesting. And the Rocha ray is a, if you look on either side of the screen, you'll see two pink dots that mm -hmm. flash. And if you hit your action button, when those dots are over top of the bees, it will, it's a bug zap, or it zaps them. And every time you kill a robot, it will recharge. And so it's, it's a Rocha beam. And then as you move through the game, uh, the level of difficulty will increase. More nasty bees and move faster. Moves at a pretty quick clip, doesn't it, Bo? Mm -hmm. um, Gary did a great job with this one. Uh, it's even got, again, it's got the voice support. Uh, and the voice in this game um, is, is bees, the sound of bees. You know, so that would be kind of weird coming out of your eyes. I'd be afraid things blowing up. Yeah, yeah. It's and, usually not a good sound with technology. And then when you die, it goes, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much the extent of the of that. Now this game is so free form and and odd. You know there are twenty six levels uh, on the Odyssey, and the uh, 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 the game was pretty well thought of. Uh, I looked up some, even looked up some uh, some uh, reviews for the original. Uh, Nextlevel.com gave it four point one out of five, and Moby Games gives it seventy eight out of hundred. I think that's a little low. I mean, if you consider I don't think there's ever been a game that's been quite like this. I'm one. very surprised at those low scores because this is there are so few truly unique titles for the consoles at this time. You know, most of the most of the games coming out for consoles were straight ripoffs of arcade games, and this is this is something that there's no equivalent to it in the arcade. I mean, I, I, I've, I've never I've never played a game really like this before. Well, if you're gonna port an Odyssey to e, and Gary apparently knew better than me. Because I would have been like, oh, I want to get Pickaxe Pete, or I want to get uh, uh, Quest of the Rings. But, I mean, those games are, I mean, Quest of the Rings is pretty unique, granted. But, I mean, those games are sort of derivative. Uh, Pickaxe Pete, for example, sort of has a Donkey Kong flair to it. and uh, Alien Invaders, you know what that's a yeah. player for. So, if you're going to pick the most unique title that the Odyssey 2 ever produced, this is the one. And the Amiga version of it is great. It's actually, it improves upon the original, in my opinion. You've got more space to operate. Uh, the uh, it looks great. I mean, it's it's a uh, uh, it's just a lot of fun. The controls are tight, and I've, uh, I play the game a, a lot more than I care to admit. Uh, than I, how much I've played it. My go-to game on the Amiga when I've got just a few minutes to kill, I'll pop it in, load it up, and uh, uh, it's tight. Again, if it, it was uh, Blitz Basic and it, it was top shelf, you know, it did a good job. What do you think? I I love this game. Um, this is probably favorite of the three just because it is so unique it's 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 a game where you're not shooting something mm -hmm. it's not really a maze game um you know it's 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 totally unique the i mean it did it does get me it gets a little bit too hard too fast and you know, every time i would play i would sort of get to the same point where i'd be like boy even if i played this a ton i don't know if i'd be able to get any better at yeah. it because those red bees are just so fast and also the, the ropes get to be so fast that it's hard to kind of track them with your stick yeah the uh, I think that Rocha Ray is key uh, to kind of save that up when mm -hmm. the bad stuff comes out. And another thing that uh, is we talked this before briefly is like is the possibility of maybe using like a this game the, you're hampered almost by the, the the your own hand in some ways. I would love to see a version of this that would support like the mouse or a trackball. Mm -hmm. That would be sweet. And the could, Odyssey did have a trackball, right? No, it never did no. a trackball. Okay. But the Amiga has a mouse. Yeah. And I think it would be kind of fun to have mouse support mm -hmm. uh, that you could move that thing around. I mean, That's I don't true. see any reason why it wouldn't be doable. Right. Uh, if from a control aspect, you could use the mouse to, for your Rocha array. And, uh, but, I mean, even with a stick, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you have to be a pretty hand to, uh, to get very far. My high score in this one was 1,000... No, 13,392. Pretty good, Boat. By the way, just for kicks, I looked this one up on eBay to see what it was going for. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's funny. The last couple of years, this thing's gotten a lot more attention. Bees. Uh, I first heard about it on a, on a uh, podcast called uh, Now You're Playing with Podcasts, which is out of, some guys out of Columbus and some girls, which I love their podcast. Uh, and uh, um, they were talk going off about it, how great it was. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm going to have to give that a shot because I don't know if I ever played that. And that's when I first you know, fired it up on the multi card. I'm like, oh, this is a winner. But uh, on eBay right now, uh, this is an Odyssey game. These things are usually pretty cheap. 
a box copy. This is going for between thirty and fifty bucks. Wow. So, yeah. So surprising. Yeah. So time for the main event of the evening, I guess. All righty. Uh, this is probably if you ask someone to name any Aussie two game, they're probably going to go, "What's that?" And they're <laughs> they're going to go, "Oh, the one with Casey Munchkin." And you're like, "Yeah, that's it, Casey Munchkin." Uh, sort of the king of all Odyssey 2 games. Uh, this thing was uh, designed by Ed Averett, which he ended up designing the majority of the, right. uh, of the, the Odyssey titles. was kind of his, his thing. This came out in 81, and it was called, in, in some areas, it was just called Munchkin. Yeah, I think over everywhere here. except for the United States. Yeah, but over here, it's not We got to give them, Munchkin. you know, cool initials. Yeah. Uh, so. What is Casey Munchkin? You know, they probably did that because if they didn't, people would think it was something from Willy Wonka. Do you know what Casey stands for? Uh, No. The president of Phillips Consumer Electronics was Kenneth C. Merkin. Ooh. That's where they got that. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that either until I looked it up. So, uh, what is Casey Munchkin? Well, you ever heard of Pac-Man? Sort of like that. Um, You have a maze, uh, and you you have a little chomper who looks a lot like... If if you picture a Pac-Man... Uh, a different color with little antenna, and when he stops, he smiles at y'all happy because mm-hmm. Casey Munch is a happy He's boy. He's a happy guy. Uh, you would sort of pick that you've got the right picture. Now, if you picture him being chased by some ghosts, uh, and the ghosts look a little different than Pac-Man ghosts. They look more kind of, I don't know, there's a little chunk missing where the legs go down. They're almost like they're little octopuses. Like, they, they remind me of the aliens and space invaders a little bit. They do. Mm-hmm. Now that you mention it, they're multicolored guys. They chase you through a maze. The maze is... Uh, has outdoors usually, but not always. As in the middle, there's a rotating square where the where the uh, ghosts come back to life if you eat one. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, "This is a Pac-Man clone. I'm done." It's not. It is, but it isn't. So when they were designing this, they told they told the guy, they said, "Ed, we need a Pac-Man for this sucker. We're not paying nothing." Basically, he's like, "I'm going to come up with something." And so what he came up with is sort of unique. And Pac-Man, as you know. The screen's full of dots. Pac-Man eats all the dots. He advances to the next level. In Casey Munchkin, there are only like 12 dots uh, on the screen. And uh, they're in packs of three. They start off in packs. And then you they move mm-hmm. around the maze. And they just move wherever they want. They just float around. Sometimes they float slowly, but as the dots disappear, they float more quickly. Uh, there's usually a, in a pack of three... Starting out, there are two regular dots and then an Energizer dot that flashes color. When you eat the Energizer dot, you can eat the ghosts, right? So that part's pretty much the same. Uh, but what they've done with the with the maze is quite interesting as well. Uh, when you start out, the maze is pretty much similar to a Pac-Man maze. But one thing that they added was in the center where the ghosts come out, uh, the, the, there's, a, there's three quarters of a square. There's three fourths of a square. It's almost like a U. And... That turns. Mm -hmm. It turns and rotates. And what they do is they can actually, there are some mazes that split the maze up into four quadrants. And the only way you can get in and out of those quadrants is to go through the You have to wait. Yeah, it's almost like a revolving door. You have to wait for the the thing to turn in your direction. That's right. And it adds a dimension to Pac-Man that no one had seen. You've got to understand that Pac-Man had one maze. You know, Miss Pac-Man added multiple mazes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, all you could really do with that is make the ghost smarter, quicker, make the Energizers last less. And Casey Munchkin, the maze changes pretty radically. And there are a bunch of different uh, maze choices you can make, uh, including some where the maze goes invisible. Mm-hmm. Very difficult, but very uh, unique to the game. Another aspect, though, that makes it more interesting is that as, the, as you eat the dots and the dots move quicker... You get to the point where you're chasing these dots around, and they're way faster than your than Casey Munchkin is, and so you're trying to go around and dodge these ghosts, and those dots have a tendency to go exactly to the place where you don't want them to go. Yeah. And what's really a pain is when they're in a different quadrant than you, and you've got to go through the middle of the board, and you're out of energizers. It makes it quite difficult, uh, but it, very entertaining. Um, I was a big fan of Casey Munchkin. I wish I got two copies of it because every time I see one I buy one I can't help myself now do you now you've played had you played this before you met me no had you heard of it at all uh, I'd heard of it just because I was into video game collecting right. but I never had an Odyssey 2 so what, what did you think about it when you saw it on, on the first time on Odyssey uh, I thought it looked I mean to be honest with you I'm, I'm a little bit less sold on the this is not a direct Pac-Man ripoff than you are 
I think that, you know, you, I, I admire the guy for not just making a straight clone, but I can definitely see in the court of law how uh, how this uh, this didn't really hold up because they ended up losing the case, right? They, they did. had to remove Casey Munson. Yes, from they actually itself. won the first round, but the, the court got a, it got appealed in eighty two. The appeal court found that Phillips uh, had copied Pac Man, and they, and Phillips had done themselves no favors either because they pushed this as a game that's like Pac Man. So they could they didn't exactly do it from a marketing, so they didn't do the best job to make it their case stronger. Uh, but um, you, if you put yourself back in time to when Pac-Man was released for the home consoles, uh, it was and uh, there was a home console, I might add, which was the uh, was the Atari, mm-hmm. um, the twenty six hundred, and it was their their version of Pac-Man, which is legendarily bad. Uh, the guy who made it got paid big time, you know, but he did it quick, right? You know, and it was ugly and flashy. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time I saw it at a Sears, I was like, my God, they really. He was a kid. Well, I was impressed with everything. I was like, "Man, this is yeah, it was not sucks. good." You know, and and it's funny because since then people have came back and remade Pac Man for the twenty six hundred and made it great. Yeah, uh, but of course hindsight is twenty twenty. They had all the techniques that were developed and all to the a run. whole lot more time. And exactly, yeah. and and cartridge space mm-hmm. that they might not have had back right. then. So, I mean, hats off to them. Yeah, uh, but. If you look in the in the realm of public opinion for a Pac Man, because people were obsessed with it, uh, this game clearly was more like the arcade Pac Man than the other Pac Man. Sure, was. absolutely, one hundred percent, and with some additional bonus fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was even the ability to 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 do your own mazes in mm-hmm. it. I mean, it gave you a lot of options. You know, one thing that all three of these games share, and I guess is common to all the Odyssey games, is that they all have a built-in high score function. That's true. Um, where you can always see your high score in all these games and that makes it a really fun party system as you're p- passing around you know you're trying to beat each other's high scores and it's always right there in front of that's you that's right well that was sort of mandated by Ma- by phyllis magnavox because they w- wanted to try to do something with that membrane keyboard and it was it, i mean hey when i played this with brent we would always put our names in you know because it was a badge of honor mm-hmm. it's too bad it didn't have any sort of battery backup that would right. keep it in. of course that was years away yeah you know yeah. but it was still we would leave ours on for i mean that thing was on for days you know, where we're, we didn't want to leave those scores. And, you know, it was, it was you could still take your picture and your score was there. It was good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, this game, when it when, uh, when Gary ported it over, it was quite a surprise to us. We, uh, again, this happened on the Amigathon, and I don't remember exactly the hour. It was it was late when we finally got it. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, it wasn't that late, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Really? 4 in the morning. Did we have, is this one, do we still have the footage of this one? We don't, unfortunately. Oh, bummer. Yes. Well, that's, that's, well, uh, it doesn't matter because I'll tell you what I said then. I was blown away. First of all, it was, it was awful nice of Gary. Gary hasn't ever charged for any of his games, uh, and he's given them he, away. He makes his source code freely available. That's right, and uh, uh, puts all his projects up. And so he wrote this game and put on just just to be a nice guy to release it during the uh, Amigathon as a surprise. He put our he put our little uh, avatars in there, which was. I was, I was, I can't even tell you how it was very, was. I, very nice. I've talked to Bode off, off, off mic about, you know, I'm not going to get it, but that was, I you're was, talking like somebody from the industry now. It, it, I, hey, I'm going to have one of those Oscar moments. <laughs> it really moved me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it really did. And I mean, I, and it's happened a few times on the show. People have been super duper nice. And it was, I mean, it was above and beyond. Uh, and then we got to play the game, and Gary has done a, a very good job. Yeah, this is by far the. I mean, all of Gary's ports are great. Yeah, this, this is, is the greatest. This is the most this complex, is, yeah, I would yeah. say. Um, you know, we should come right out and say the biggest change between this and his other ports is that with the press of a space bar, you can go between more updated modern graphics or the original Odyssey two graphics. Yes, and. Um, you know, and both are good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I almost always play with the old ones because I'm, I'm just because I'm an old Odyssey two guy, so mm-hmm. I get the really. But I mean, it having played it a lot, I mean, it's very, very similar. Uh, it plays very similarly to the uh, to the one I grew up playing, and uh, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Gary changed the opening menu so you can select mazes and and whatnot, uh, and it was uh, it was it was a lot. Of, it was a, a hell of an effort, frankly, if you want the truth. Uh, 
I, I, I didn't see any real problems with it at all. I don't think the maze editor is, is in there, but you wouldn't expect that. Right. And really, no one ever used it that much. I mean, me and Britt would try, but you, inevitably, you, you could make a maze where, the pack, where Casey Winter couldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is you, you do all the work to make the maze, and you have no way of saving it. Right. So, yeah. That's also true. You, you don't have any way to save, to save the game. Uh, this actually got a sequel. Uh, believe it or not, it was called Casey's Crazy Chase, where he uh, munched down on a on a, uh, a caterpillar, uh, which was sort of centipede-like, I guess, but not quite. You know, I was looking into some Gary stuff, because believe it or not, he didn't, aside from these three things, he's done some other stuff. Um, so get this boat. I don't, even, I don't know if you knew this or not. Uh, he's made uh, uh, Pickaxe Pete, uh, Terra Hawks, Killer bees, all for the ZX Spectrum. Ooh! And he's got and Casey Munchie, which apparently it says here unfinished uh, for the ZX Spectrum. I didn't. I, I knew he had worked on the ZX Spectrum, so we may have to try those. Yeah. Sometime that might be kind of fun. Uh, and uh, uh, Gary, I read a little blurb here that said Gary would like to do Pickaxe Pete and Quest for the Rings, which I would like to see both those done. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, Pickaxe Pete. Is on my short list of, of, of great Amiga titles that I would love to play on, or a great Odyssey title I'd like to play on the Amiga. I don't know if you've ever played Pick XP, mm -hmm. but it's another sort of a. Listen, the, you know, Ed did Casey Munchkin. They're like, we need we need something like Donkey Kong, Ed, and so it's like it's like all right, and, and this is sort of like his answer to Donkey right. Kong on the O2. It's so impressive that you know one guy just you know knocking these things out one after the other. He he made uh, he did uh, I was I think we calculated it was like three quarters of the entire wow. or maybe three fifths of the uh, every Odyssey two game ever made was done by him. Now it's funny uh, uh, just to put Gary over. Gary is the programming language he's using. He's still sort of learning because I was reading some of the back and forth. Uh, but I mean the the attention to detail, the the fact that he got them this close. I think he's learning pretty well, and I believe his family does his playtesting too, right? I know at least yeah. one family member does the playtesting. So, uh, good job, good job to them too for getting the getting it shined up, right? But uh, we wanted to spotlight what Gary's doing uh, because you know I don't think these guys that are porting these games over uh, are are getting a, a whole lot of attention, and we want to see we want to see ports of everything. We want to see it all. We would love to see. Some Intellivision stuff come over, or some, uh, you know, some crazy system stuff. Like we covered Karotica uh, way, way back when it got ported over from the ST, and that was great. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, Boat asked me because you know we should do more ports and modern stuff, and I was like, oh, we did, we did some. He's like, oh, what are we doing? The only things I could think of were Karotica. What was there one more? I and Killer Bees. Killer Bees. That's the only two. <laughs> so I'm like, dang, you're right. So we're probably going to start covering some more of this stuff in the future, right? Eh? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Aaron, before we go, uh, I'd just like to uh, to thank everybody. This is a, this week is a uh, very special week. Three years ago, this week, uh, we recorded episode one of the Amigos. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Three years ago. I had no idea. Yeah. That says you were, I, I don't know. It's my longest commitment ever. I thought of my girlfriend and son. So uh, thank you, everybody, for three years of uh, Amiga goodness. You know, this, this show has become so much more than we ever thought it would be. Uh, I want to thank, you know, everybody on Discord, everybody in the Brain Trust. Uh, you guys are just as much part of this show as we are. We love doing it, and uh, hopefully we'll have many more years of Amiga goodness. I, I, uh, I, I got to jump in and just say, yeah, thank you very much again for everyone Boat Talk to, all the Patreons, all the people just download it every week or view it on YouTube. Uh, we've been, um, it's a, it, it, we've been very fortunate to have, Met so many nice people uh, in the past three years. Three years. I mean, when we started this thing up, it was just the dirt bottom. <laughs> you know, I just think about that. I'm like, man, how do we even do anything past the episode two? You know, I, I don't know if we go to the same, sh you know, modeling shtick that a lot of, you know, it's not third. But, but I mean, it really, it is, it, it, it's a, given who we are and our schedules, it's, it's, I'm astonished that we could even get together long enough to even do any of these. It's a freaking miracle. Tonight's a perfect example. Uh, but we appreciate everyone paying attention and just and you know bearing with us for three years. Yeah, we really do. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm so, going to get emotional, boat. Well, don't get it too emotional because it's time for this week's Patreon song challenge. Oh uh, man, last I'm going to get emotional during that too. Last week uh, we had three winners. Last week's song. Do you remember what it was? Oh man, I, I remember the aftermath. 
of the what was it? Was Tell the people. We can work it out yeah. by the Beatles. Yeah, that was. Uh, and uh, we got Duncan Styles, Paul Harrington, and Dell is dreamy. Man. Thank you for uh, your winning observation. You have an ear for quality, good sirs. Man. Um, this week, we've got a brand new song challenge and some brand new patrons. Uh, we earned one oh, more yeah. uh, Migos supporter. We'd like to welcome Matthew Laramore, who oh, is uh, yep, I know him. our friend in real life. He's known in certain circles as Evil Matt. Get to know him. You'll understand why. <laughs> so here we go. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, if you know the answer to this week's Amigos Patreon song challenge, please write to me at john at amigospodcast.com so I may congratulate you on this week's episode. <laughs> Matthew, Lara, Moore, Andy, Craig, Shanzo, Darren, Lomax, Colin, 419, Barkbit, Seb, Kiernan, Roland, Burke, Andrew, Monks, Joe, the Zombie, John, Cook, Dan, Ross, Leaf, Killon, Alan, Cub, Bob, Donald, Tyler, Level, Lord, John, Marshall, Matthew, Perron, Ricky, DeRosha, Creepy, Dead Boy, Figgy, CTZ, The Slow Norris, Stefan, Sogren, Martinson, Edmund, Helen, Blender, 75, Christopher, Rabbi, Habit, Chris Foles, Dreamcatcher, Lauren, Jaru, Graham, Vipke, Brent, Dowdy, Lane, Denson, Adam, Battersbury, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Alan Kebab, Anthony Jarvis, Tapes from the Crept, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim, Tommy Humbertstad, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels at Dawn, and Kjell Bjorn Barman. I've got no idea. That was a song? It's, pro- it's out of your wheelhouse, You turned man. it down a little bit this week. It's out of your wheelhouse. You gotta mellow out sometimes. Uh-huh. I, I've got an idea, but I... Whew, man. I don't know what to tell you about three years, huh? And we're still on. People three are listening years. to that. Holy smokes. All right, Aaron. Next week on Amigos, we will be talking about Team 17's only pool game, Arcade Pool. Oh, boy. I've heard good things about this game, actually. Yeah. I'm sort of looking forward to it after the, after the last... Uh, what was the la- the uh, uh, what was the Jimmy name? White? Jimmy White. How can you Schnooka. forget? Schnooka. Did we, but I thought we did. We do another uh, pool game between there and here. Maybe mm, I'm insane. No, I like think billiards. Jimmy White Snooker was the only one that we did. Uh, okay, so. well, good. We're due then. Yeah, we're yeah. due. Hey, it's gonna be a long haul to get past the, Mr. White. <laughs> we'll opinion. see how it stacks up. Until next time, guys. We'll see you then. Adios. Adios.